When you come to use the GC, you should find a GC sitting there like this, ready to go. There's a couple things you need to check to begin with. Go to make sure you're using the right method. If you're checking the fusel oils, there's actually two methods. There's the fusel oil standard, which you'll use to run the standards, or you will use load method fusel oil samples for your wine samples. When you are, either method has now changed, fusel oil samples. When you are running the citrus, there is only one method. So, we are going to run a standard, so now we can use our pull down menu. We'll change that to fusel oil standard method. And then you are going to go to run control, sample info. You don't do anything with the operator name, but you do have to make sure that there is a fusel oil winter 2021 subdirectory. That's where all the data is going to be saved. Do not touch anything here for the signals. This is all set up automated. Under sample location, you always want to make sure that there is a number one there. Otherwise, you will not be able to do injections. Under sample name, you can put your name in here. I'm just going to test a standard. So I've got in here QC standard one. You could have your name plus whatever sample you're running or standard. In the comment section, you can put down your unknown number just so you have a reference for it. And then you are going to always click run control, or sorry, run method. The sample submitted, and it now says here waiting for injection. You want to make sure you look over here under instrument actuals. Right now it says GC state ready, waiting, and ready for prep run. So we're waiting to do our injection. If you are in between samples or in between standards, the temperature may not be ready and it will tell you GC ready state not ready. So wait until it is actually ready. As soon as you see up here in violet where it says waiting for injection, we know we are good to do an injection. So to do your injections, we will have all five standards sitting over here. You will have your diluent and you are going to rinse your syringe 10 times with your diluent. Proper technique, just lift it up as I'm doing here with the two fingers, rinse it 10 times. And one of the things you can do to make sure that the syringe is still working properly, when you are rinsing, just put a squirt onto the Kim White. Make sure that there's actually a wet spot that's actually forming and you know that the syringe is working properly. So after 10 rinses, Wipe your, kim, your syringe so we don't cross-contaminate. Get your standards. Don't drop the cap. A little humor there. Okay. Rinse your syringe 10 times now with your standard. Again, this is probably the better technique to withdraw your liquid from the syringe so that you don't pull the plunger right out of the syringe. And I, what I'm doing is I'm pulling up, and you'll see on the scale, I'm pulling up to about the six or seven microliter mark. And it'll be very hard to see on the camera, but that's what I'm doing. My last time now, I'm ready to do my injection. So what I'm going to do is pull this up very slowly because I want to try and minimize the air bubbles that form. And then bring this up. Very slowly push it to the one microliter mark. Wipe the tip. And now bring this syringe, oh, sorry, the plunger back about two microliters. We're creating an air jacket. That air jacket is going to take longer to heat up. So we've got a greater chance of injecting our sample onto the GC before it vaporizes. So now that we're ready to go, when you are about to inject, put your finger over top of the plunger depending upon the volatility of your liquid, you may get that plunger pushing upwards. So we'll go over to the GC now. And on the GC, it will tell you where to do your injections. On this particular model, we can only inject fusel oil in the back for it. On some of the other GCs, the fusel oils will be in the back, the citrus will be in the front. So by convention, if you can do both on the GC, 
the citrus will be up in the front, the fuse oils will be in the back. So what you want to do with this now, you want to have one fluid motion, no stopping. The longer it takes you to do your injection, the more likely you're going to heat up your liquid and then get it to evaporate. So you can guide it into the port, push it straight in, push the plunger down, and then immediately push the start button. Then you can pull out your switch. By pushing the start button, you come over to the GC, you'll see this red line here. This red line is your time zero. So you want to make sure that you push that start button immediately after you push the plunger. If you wait a minute and talk to your friends, hey, how you doing? Then what will happen is your start time will be delayed and you will not have the correct retention time. So nice fluid motion, inject, push the start, then pull your syringe out. We're talking about the fuse oils with the fuse oil standard. The run time is about four minutes with the standard method. It's about eight minutes with the sampled method. If you're talking about citrus, the citrus method is about three minutes. So now we just wait until the, the run is over. But one thing I will point out while we're going through here is right now we're looking at a scale here from about six minutes long, okay? If you find that it is not long enough or it is too long, we can click on this change button, click on your signal, here's your y-axis. Sorry, the x-axis. So we can adjust the length. Our run time here is only five minutes. So I'll drop it down to the five minutes and we will be able to see the entire five minute run. Right now, here's my y-axis. If my, I'm not able to see all of the peaks, now the first peak is going to be your diluent, so you're not gonna see all of it, but that is fairly big. So let's try changing this to 5,000, click OK, adjust, just simply lowers it, and now we can start to see our chromatograms. Again, this is your, your um, diluent, and then now we can start to see our peaks. In this case here, it's a little on the small side, so let's click back on change, click back up on our signal, and let's try dropping it down. so that our peaks start to look a little bit bigger. Not big enough, click on your signal, drop it down. And now again, we can't seal the signal, so you've gone too far. So what I plan on doing is having this all set up to the right range on the GCs. So for the most part, we should not have to change them again. Now that we've changed that signal room, you can't see your chromatogram, so click on the adjust button. Alright, at the end of your chromatogram run analysis, you will get this pop-up window that shows your chromatogram. It'll show you your peaks. It will show you your retention times, as well as the areas and peak heights. If you don't see nice sharp peaks, that means there was something wrong with your, uh, your injection. We'll talk a little bit about that just at the end of the video, but it means you must redo the injection. At this point, we want to print our chromatogram so we'll click on the little printer icon at the top over here it's already set up to the default printer microsoft print to pdf so you will go down to the bottom and click on print make sure that it is in the correct folder you want the student data winter 2021 folder and depending upon which day that you're in, so let's just go back for a second. If you have forgotten or it didn't show up properly, click on the desktop. Then you can click on the winter 2021 folder. And then depending upon what day it is, today's Friday. So I will click on the Friday and I am going to then type in QC 
standard five, you'll type in whatever name of your name is, plus whatever sample or standard you're running. Click on save, and your chromatogram has been saved. Oops, I didn't mean to close that. Is it lost forever? No, it's not. Go over to the data analysis window. And then remember that folder we set up at the beginning and during your injections, I said, make sure we're putting it in the Fusil Oils Winter 2021 folder. Click on single runs. You will see this little dialog box saying no signals available. That's normal, click okay. And then look up at the directory up here in the top middle part. You will see a list of all of the signals that have been run. Double click on the one you wanna see again. And then you can click on identify peaks and you will get that chromatogram back again. Then again, if you have to reprint it, you can hold hover over top of the print icon and print it. If you just want to take a look at it to see what your injections were like, that's all right there. Close it all up. Go back to the method. You're ready for your next injection. So you're going to go back up to run control, sample info. Yes, every single time that you do an injection, you have to go back up to the run control, put in your sample name, put in your name. You can put in your, your sample ID. Okay. Just remember to always have something in this sample location. There should be a number one there. Otherwise, you won't get a chance to do your injection that point, click run method. If you simply click OK, you'll notice nothing happens. So we'll go back up to run control, sample info, click on run method, sample submitted, says waiting for injection, and then you can do your injections again. If you realize that you did something wrong, you typed in the wrong standard name, if you want to stop this, Click back on run control, down at the very bottom, stop run, and then that run will have stopped. You can go back in here, type in the correct standard number, and then click on run method to start it. Okay? Uh, every single time, as I said, you're going to need to go to run control. At this point, I've gone over pretty well everything. This instrument diagram, you don't need to worry about. There's nothing there. We've talked about how to change the peak height. If, for example, you've got really, really small peaks, you can't see everything. But the last thing I just want to sort of mention is a few little troubleshooting issues so you know what, you're, what you might have done wrong. Again, if you didn't see those nice sharp peaks, it is usually 90% of the time due to an injection problem. So... We talked about the one microliter. So you bring, you have your one microliter. Don't forget your air jacket. So you're gonna bring your plunger back two to three microliters. That gives you that air jacket in here that will take longer to heat up so your sample's not going to vaporize. And then on the GC itself, one of the most common issues is right here. You take too long to push that plunger down or you bend it. The one the reason we bend it, guide it into place and then push it straight down. And then you can do your injection and then you push start. By holding it in place right here, you're heating up this area, you're heating up your sample and giving it a chance to start to vaporize. And that's why you'll get bad peaks. So, Nice, smooth injection. Here, I'll just sort of put my finger there to show you. You can use two fingers to guide it. Straight down all the way, do your injection, hit start. One of the other issues that people tend to do is they'll put their syringe and just leave it here and then do the injection. So we're injecting into this nut rather than injecting into the GC. Oh, by the way, when you are guiding this towards the injector ports, these nuts are red hot. Do not touch the green nuts. They will burn your fingers. Uh, at this point, I think I've now gone over everything that you need to have a good analysis. Good luck with everything and uh, happy GCing.